let's talk pumpkin pie. So when I was in pastry school, my chef, Chef Eddie, said that pumpkin puree is such a good product to use for any kind of baked goods. You can try to use raw pumpkin that you bake yourself, but you'll never get the smoothness and texture that you can get from a uh, can of pumpkin. So for this, this feeling, I'm just following the instructions on the can. But one thing I'm going to adjust here is the spices. I love to use a lot of spice in my pumpkin pie. It gives it such a pretty color. And it kind of, it goes so well with the pumpkin. I feel like sometimes in the store-bought ones, it's, it's just not as good. It needs some more spice in it. So we're going to do it that way. So I'm going to do this in a certain order so that I get a really nice smooth filling. You can do this in a mixture if you prefer, but it's definitely not necessary. All my ingredients right now are at room temperature, including my eggs. And that is what I'm going to add next because I want to make sure my eggs are fully blended into this puree. And like I said earlier, I don't want stringy egg whites because when you cut into a pie and you have a string of egg white, it just doesn't look very nice and it doesn't taste cohesive. So I'm going to spend a lot of time mixing this part up because I want to make sure that my eggs are broken up really well in here. should do it. In goes my condensed milk. And you can see that since I blended up my eggs really well, the mixture incorporated the milk, the condensed milk really easily and nicely. So I'm just going to do a scrape, scrape around and on the bottom make sure I didn't miss anything down there. So right now this is way too orange for me. I'm going to add in a pinch of salt and all these nice spaces. Tiny pinch, not my usual. <laughs> so, I'm going to focus on cinnamon. Just a touch of nutmeg. And clove. I go kind of heavy on the clove too. Because that is a really tasty flavor. So, as you can see, this is probably more spice than what you're used to putting into your pumpkin pie, but oh man, it is worth it. even though there's raw eggs you don't have to do this part but I like to give it a little taste as a preview to make sure this pie flavor is exactly the way I want it it is really good and as it bakes the spice flavor will come out even more so one more step before we get this guy in the oven is to brush this with some egg wash. Before I add my filling in. Oh, 
and I've turned down the heat on my oven to 375 for this part. I'm going to bake it the same way you would bake creme brulee or at least what I'm looking for in texture wise and so I know it's ready when if I jiggle it in the oven it's a little bit like jello in the middle and it's more set on the outside. If you over bake in this part that's when you can end up having cracks in your pie so we're going to do our best not to get to that point. So this is the area you want to focus on it should just have a little bit of jiggle in the middle. So I'm just taking my pie out of the oven. I would say it took about 25 to 30 minutes to bake this at 375. And as you can see, there's a jiggle in the middle. But once it's set, that's going to go away and the pie is going to become firm. So I'm going to wait for this pie to set before I add my whipped cream in. You can either do a dollop all the way around, which kind of gives people an idea of how big the slices should be, or you can wait and let people serve themselves. You can also, if you want to go above and beyond, put it in a piping bag and just make a little decoration around the edge. Ugh.